Hello, hello, and welcome back to Interior Creatures Home on YouTube. As always, I am Jacqueline Michelle. I'm the creator and founder of Interior Creature, birth chart alchemist using human design, gene keys, and astrology to help you step into your highest self. So without any further ado, let's get into AMA Friday for this week. Our question this week comes from Chrissy. Chrissy asks, I got my chart read about a year ago. I've been practicing using my strategy and listening to my authority, but I feel like there's more. Any thoughts? Oh my God, Chrissy, I have so many thoughts. <laughs> this is, I have read several, oh my God, a couple thousand charts over the years for my clients. And I cannot tell you how many times this is the question someone asks right at the end of the reading. Like, I get I need to practice my strategy. I get I need to honor my authority, but like, is there something else I should be doing? Definitely have some thoughts and I cannot wait to share them with you. Chrissy, I am a bit of an evangelist for this, so I'm so glad you asked this question. What I always encourage folks to build is something I like to call a birth chart informed reflective practice or a birth chart informed embodiment practice. I need a better name for it. So if anybody has any suggestions, fun acronyms, like definitely let me know because I know it's a mouthful. But what it basically means is taking all of the information that you learn about yourself through your chart and putting it into practice and trying to kind of embody the higher frequency vibrations of those placements. So here's what I mean. When we're looking at our human design chart, we're looking at two things. We're looking at our nature, which is how we're wired. And in human design, the gene keys, astrology, et cetera, we think of those things as like kind of like, yeah, like our natural wiring, how we're walk, wired to walk through the world. But we also have to consider that every single one of us from the moment that we exit the womb encounter other people. And they have a very specific idea of who we should be and how we should be and what we should value. And over the course of our life, we encounter literally thousands of people who are silently co-authoring our story of who we are with us, almost without our consent or knowing, right? And all of that nets out to our kind of sense of self, right? So a birth chart informed embodiment practice gives us the tools that we need to take a look at this nature and go, okay, well, how am I wired? What feels really natural to me? How is my intuitive body talking to me through my authority? How am I naturally wired to make decisions via my strategy? And how have I been nurtured? What conditioning have I taken on that might be, you know, blocking me from feeling or understanding or honoring some of those messages my body is sending me? And is it helping me or is it harming me? So it's like taking our energy out into the light of day and like, bringing it down to compartmentalized enough pieces to look at it and really make an uh, make a very um incent intentional decision about what we want to keep and what we want to shift so i want to help you build a birth chart informed embodiment practice of your own if that's something you choose to do and to do so i want to teach you something called the feel protocol we use it in the program that I built, the Karmic Studies Elevator, which literally is dedicated to this work. It's, it's populated with folks who we've done the reading, we've done maybe the self-study, but we want to start putting into practice. So it's a kind of solo self-paced space and a group program where we kind of do that work together. And one of the tools that we utilize in the Karmic Studies Elevator is called the Feel Protocol. So for this, the protocol to make sense, I want to teach you something that you may or may not have been exposed to about human design about the way that our placements manifest in our physical energy. So for every single one of us, for every placement that we have, whether it's a center that's open or closed, whether it's a gate that's activated or not, a channel we might have, our relationship to our incarnation cross, there's kind of a fear expression of the gate, a love expression of the gate, and kind of a miraculous expression of the gate. So let me show you what I mean. So for every single placement in our chart, there is the potential to have a low frequency vibration of that energy. So think of it as like, I'll give you an example, like control, right? We have this gate in human design, gate 21. And if you have that activated in your chart, like a low frequency vibration of that gate might be being super controlling and putting your needs to the detriment of other people's, which Richard Rudd would call the shadow in the gene keys. And a reactive shadow would be like, my needs come first and screw everybody else. And that that's really out of balance. You're choosing from a place of fear, scarcity, lack, anger, hurt, trauma, right? And again, it doesn't mean you're a terrible person. A lot of times when we're in the shadow or the low frequency vibration of these gates, we're a hurt person who's been hurt and we're hurting other people because of our hurt, right? Um, so we might be choosing to, you know, interact with that gate 21 control, which could be a really beautiful gift um, in a way that's maybe harming others to our own, you know, to glorification of the self. 
or the opposite could be true. We could be way too submissive and we're, you know, pushing down our own needs to the point where it's like everyone else comes first and my needs don't come at all. Richard Rudd would call that the repressive shadow. Um, some people talk about this as being stuck in kind of a victim abuser consciousness. It's like power is black and white. It's either I'm in power or I lack all the power, right? So one of the things that we want to work on is identifying where we've been in this low frequency vibration, the shadow, if you will, and start integrating it. Start, you know, calling ourselves out, having those honest conversations with ourselves about when we've exhibited these behaviors and say, okay, I want to interrupt this pattern because it's not serving me. It's not serving anybody else. How do I step forward and maybe walk through the world with more compassion, more empathy, more love, right? So the high frequency vibration is what we're aiming for. And this puts self and other more in balance. So Richard Rudd would call this the gift of the specific gate or the specific, you know, placement. So it'd be ha like having for gate 21, for example, maybe a more balanced relationship with control, knowing when it's time to like take the keys and sit in the driver's seat. And cause that's what best serves the community or best serves the project or, and knowing when it's time to kind of, maybe you can best serve by sitting in the passenger seat. Maybe that's the way you can be most supportive. It's knowing kind of when to step up and when to step back. So it's taking that us out of that autopilot, which a lot of times is the vibration of that like low frequency energy, disrupting the autopilot, bringing us into a place of self-awareness so we can step from that into self-empowerment. And once that high frequency vibration of that energy becomes like our, our new default setting, then miracles happen. Then we start stepping into what uh, Richard Rudd calls the city expression of that gate. And it's this feeling of like pure love and kindness and empathy and miracles. It just you're basically walking through the world embodying that beautiful kind of compassionate love-based energy that's full of gratitude and full of abundance and, and just pure joy and love that you can't, you can't help but walk through the world like emanating that, that kind of, you know, ah, it's just, a, it's a wonderful feeling when you're able to kind of get there. Right. And so one of the things that we do is kind of, again, look at where we maybe are stuck in that low frequency vibration you know, work on forgiving ourselves for maybe decisions that we've made or harm that we may have inadvertently caused, you know, digging into where that may have come from and why, if it feels safe to do so, to try to, again, transmute that energy into like making a different choice that's more compassionate, more kind, because then we're showing up better for ourselves and better for the communities that we're a part of. And once that becomes our default setting, it's like anything is possible. And that's where at the, when we get into this high frequency and kind of pure love vibration, that's where we just find this like tremendous amounts of just ease and grace and flow. So to kind of summarize, we're all a combination of our design and our conditioning. So a birth chart informed embodiment practice takes you really through this honest self scrutiny, this uh, practice of really looking at yourself and going, okay, which placements do I already maybe have in that high frequency vibration habitually? Like where am I already kind of in that miraculous pure love vibration and how does it feel when I'm in it? But almost more importantly, because this is, I think, where a lot of us get stuck, which placements of mine are kind of stuck in that autopilot, stuck in that low frequency fear fed vibration? And how does that feel? Is it actually serving us? And so through this embodiment practice, we self-identify and we want to go in and kind of love ourselves through those realizations and practice forgiveness and practice compassion for ourselves, for our choices. And then again, through kind of bringing it into the light of day, we can make a different choice. The goal of this work is to basically get from a place of epiphanies to a place of embodiment, right? So one of the things that we're really intentional about doing in the Karmic Studies Elevator is we really kind of put the emphasis on, I need to understand, yes, thoroughly my chart, my placements, what they are, what they mean, but then I need to contemplate them and get really honest with myself about, again, my past relationship to this energy my present relationship, set goals about what I want my relationship to that energy to be, you know, where have I been maybe blocking myself, self-abandoning, stepping in my own way, self-sabotaging, or when have I been just like not honoring the messages my body is trying to send me? Like so much of us, I think, so many of us have been um, rather just conditioned away from honoring the messages our body is sending us. So it's really kind of getting back into our body, honoring those messages, and then walking the walk, making a plan so that the next time something comes up that, you know, uh, might trigger that specific center, that specific gate, whatever kind of has that theme, we start doing differently. We don't lapse back into those kind of autopilot uh, behaviors. We, we've built different default behaviors in their place, right? So to do this, the medicine we use, we kind of use our human design chart as an anchor 
we definitely look at the richness, which is Richard Rudd's work with the Gene Keys. What I love about looking at those two things in tandem is the language in um, Ra Uruhu uh, slash Linda Bunnell's kind of transmission of human design. It's very direct. And I think if you look at it, sometimes I think it it's hard to like not put the connotation I think we're used to with a lot of words onto his writing. So sometimes it feels very harsh. It can feel very raw. And I know personally, like my under my feeling of Richard Rudd's work is that it kind of just oozes with empathy and compassion. A lot of it is anchored in, you know, Buddhist teachings and, and quantum physics and a lot of different things. It feels a little bit more like a warm hug to me, but I also have found a lot of um, really great insight by kind of toggling between the two and seeing what they both say. And a lot of times between reading both transmissions, I have these beautiful aha moments. So we use both of those tools within our, um, within our program. And then there's also amazing insight we can gain by looking at both our astrological natal chart and our astrological gestational chart. We know our placements in human design are rooted and anchored in all of our astrological placements. So by pulling up the actual natal charts and gestational charts that go with both our conscious and our unconscious respectively, we can see the houses, for example, that our gates are impacting to get even more clarity about where these specific things are showing up for us, right? So for this field protocol that we're going to, I'm going to teach you in a second, you want to apply it to literally every single placement in your chart. And it's funny, one of the sayings they have is that it takes what, like seven years to decondition. I know that's one of like the, the teachings in human design. I say it's a lifelong process because look at all the things you can take the field protocol through, right? You can take it through your open centers. You can take it through your relationship to your closed centers, your relationship to your type, to your strategy, your authority, your incarnation cross, your profile. Those are just the foundational kind of key aspects of, of your chart. And then if you take it through your relationship to the energy of the lines and how those are distributed throughout your chart, the planets that are activating your specific gates, the zodiac sign energy that impacts the gates themselves, the houses things show up in, your conscious personality versus your unconscious design, and then taking it through again, your gates, your channels, your circuits, how the transits are impacting you, how your, your you know personal astrological returns are impacting you, your relationship to the energy of the global cycles. Like there is so much to unpack. It's a lifetime's worth of contemplation. And again, I think like the more you dig into it, this is not to make it feel overwhelming. I just want to give you, there's like a richness of stuff to tap into and there's so much insight you can uncover. I hope you can feel like the love and enthusiasm in my voice. Um, this is not to be overwhelming. It's more just like, look at all these rabbit holes we can go down. That might be my open head center talking. So I want to teach you a protocol that we use in my program, the Karmic Studies Elevator. It's called the FEEL protocol. And we utilize this for literally every single placement in our chart. It's something we do kind of independently, and then we come together as a group to kind of thought partner and share and kind of, you know, just celebrate our epiphanies and, and you know, troubleshoot things we're struggling with, right? So in the FEEL protocol, the F stands for fluency. So in the fluency phase, what we're going to do is start by learning just the language of the placements in your chart. So getting, you know, running your chart, say on a, a platform like mybodygraph.com and learning the language of your placements, which centers are open, which centers are closed, you know, what is your type, what is your strategy, what's your incarnation cross, your profile, which gates are activated by which planets on which lines, etc. Is it a conscious placement or an unconscious placement, like learning the language of your chart and then picking one thing at a time to focus on. And we're going to actually start by researching and unpacking that placement or that aspect in your chart completely objectively. And I know this is gonna be hard for those of you who have a closed mind center because I know your brain is really good at making connections, but here's why we're gonna do it objectively first. Um, I can't tell you how many folks that I've met with in readings and in the elevator that have maybe read something that sent them off on a spiral around a certain placement in their chart. And so what we wanna do first is try to grab a bunch of different resources, you know, Take a look at Instagram and TikTok are great places to start. You can search YouTube videos, but I would almost, almost like recommend if you're going to engage in a serious study, get a copy of the definitive book of human design, get a copy of the Gene Keys, maybe grab uh, Karen Curry or Chayton Parkin's work. There's a lot of great books on human design out there. Um, and they're fairly less expensive than they were, at least when I started working. i have like, oh, thank goodness, they've become more popular. The prices come down. But research first, just completely objectively, what do a bunch of different authors and teachers say are the major traits of this placement? Like what parts of your energy does it govern? How does it manifest energetically? How does it manifest in the body? And we want to do 
see this again first because of confirmation bias. So for example, I was just working with a client a couple days ago who had gate 40 activated in her chart. Gate 40 in the heart center um, is called the gate of aloneness, which sounds really terrible. It's actually a really beautiful gate about how we provide for people, how we take care of people in our community. And she had read something online that said, oh, if you have the gate of aloneness in your chart, you're going to die alone. And I don't know where she read that because it is absolutely not true, but it was something that she clung to. And because she was single and it was something like her own kind of, you know, do I want to get married? Do I want to be partnered, et cetera, was something she was kind of wrestling with. It was something that she just kind of clung to. And one of the things we did in the reading was kind of amplify or I guess extend, enhance our understanding of what that gate was. And she was able to have so many more epiphanies that she wouldn't have had if she had just gone with that one first thing she read, right? So we want to try to almost like look at it in a sterile, objective, clinical way, like what are all the traits of the thing? Let me learn about it from multiple sources, because then the next step we're going to do is explore it subjectively. So once you kind of have all your information, then we want to start taking it to our own life. We want to, about to think about the overall theme of whatever that placement is, whatever that aspect is. So for gate 40, it would be partnership. It would be providing, caretaking, um, you know, making sure like, do I allow other people to help me shoulder the burden or do I feel like I have to make, take care of it all myself? And we want to think about just like, what was my relationship to that kind of caretaker provider energy maybe in the past? What is it right now? And how do I want to embody that energy? What's my kind of aspirational embodiment of that energy look like? And start getting really curious about your habits and your patterns. So you can start with the broad strokes, like the big themes of the gate. Um, or even just like if you want to take the word aloneness even, like, okay, do I feel comfortable being single? Do I feel better being in a partnership, whether it's platonic or professional or romantic? Like, how do, how do I behave within those partnerships? Am I a provider? Do I like being provided for, et cetera? So I call this the initial incisions of a living autopsy. And I know that's kind of a morbid metaphor, but I like to think about this self-work, this shadow work, this deconditioning as almost like doing a post-mortem autopsy, like what worked, what didn't, and why. Just like a medical examiner to do, do to kind of figure out cause of death, we're looking for cause of death and cause of life. Like what's working, what's not working, why? And we want to, again, look at it in terms of subjectively, yeah, I need to do my own kind of inner work. I'm looking at my own, you know, insides, <laughs> energetic insides, if you will. Um, but we still want to try to keep it as clinical as possible because I know sometimes this work, you know, if we, especially when we're digging into things that we're not proud of or, or you know, maybe decisions we've made in the past that were like, God, that didn't serve me or, oh, cringe, like that's so embarrassing or, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. It can be really easy to devolve into like beating yourself up and then that that doesn't help us get pro pro um, that doesn't help us get productive and for move forward, right? And so we're going to go even deeper in the next step, which is called excavation. We're going to deepen our focus, though. So now we're going to keep looking at our own relationship to this energy, but we're going to really kind of zoom in our focus to look at the shadow, that low frequency vibration, uh, the gift, that high frequency vibration, and that miraculous pure love city vibration of the energy. And again, really get curious. What's my relationship been to that energy in the past, in the present? What do I aspire for it to be? What has been my conditioning around this thing? What are my default habits, patterns? So it's like going even deeper, peeling back those layers um, and figuring out like, okay, all these ways that I've been maybe potentially conditioned to behave or I've behaved as a reaction uh, to trauma, to you know, uh, with the way I was raised, what was modeled for me, et cetera. You know, it's there. Now, now I guess it's almost like I've got the, you know, the ca body cavity open energetically. I'm poking around in there doing my autopsy. Now I can decide whether I want to like leave the appendix or take it out, if that makes sense. I know that's a really weird analogy to use, but you're doing your deeper cuts and you're deciding, okay, what do I want to do moving forward? What are the things I need to heal? What are the things I need to go in and kind of start making different decisions around, love myself through, forgive myself for, kind of give that love, that compassion, that forgiveness to, so that I can start embodying this higher frequency, right? So then we're going to move from the brain to the body. So the FEE -E of feel has been very kind of like cerebral. Now we're going to put things into action and we're going to make a decision. Like how do I want to start embodying this placement's energy, this aspect's energy? What does a creative, supportive, pure love expression of this energy look and feel like? And where can I tap into that more? Like what areas of my life crave this adjustment in frequency? 
and I'm going to start doing it. And we're going to start small. You're going to start making like small little adjustments at a time and scale up so they start sticking. And again, that's part of the work that we do in that karmic studies elevator within our group integration sessions as we talk through what we're working on and how we're doing it. And sometimes we scale up and sometimes we scale back. And it's beautiful having the thought partnership of other people around to say, oh, here's something I've tried or oh, I wonder if you're still, you know, this is the third week you brought this up. I wonder if it's working, et cetera. It's like nice to have kind of a gentle mirror um, of all people doing the same work, you know, talking to each other. And then finally, what's that one thing I could add to my life that could help me embody the frequency even more, you know, consistently? And is there something I need to release from my life that could also help me embody that frequency? So it's really kind of taking it from like potential to, to action and making decisions about how you want to walk through the world moving forward. This is a practice that I've been engaged in for at least the past six years, um, if not more. Um, just in my own kind of personal birth chart informed embodiment practice, again, totally crowdsourcing a new name for that. If you've got one, let me know. Um, but I can't tell you how much more peace I have in my life, how much more ease I have in my life, how I will catch myself doing things now that like, I would have realized retroactively months later or days later. Now it's like right after it happens, I catch myself and I'm able to kind of shift and apologize or shift and love myself because that was self-abandonment or whatever it is. It's like I catch myself in the moment and it, now it's even more proactive. Like I find that these things are becoming or have become in some instances, you know, my default settings. And I, I just can't tell you how much more easeful life feels right now and how much more abundant it feels right now. Well, Chrissy, we hope that answered your question. Uh, this is my puppy, Misha. He decided to join me for the end here. If you have a question about human design, the gene keys, or astrology, we would love to help you out. So send us an email at interiorcreature at gmail.com. You can DM us on Instagram at interiorcreature. And if you're new to human design or you want to go even deeper with your practice, I bet I have something to support you at interiorcreature.com. I do one-on-one -on -one live virtual readings. We have classes where you can learn the systems of human design, gene keys, and astrology. Or you can join our conscious community where we're working together kind of to individually pull apart our charts in the way we talked about today, but also come together as a community and do that really important deconditioning work. So join us at interiorcreature.com. And until then, I'm Jacqueline Michelle. This is Misha, and I will see you next week.